The Barbie movie has been out for about two weeks now, and there's been a lot of online discussion about it. But one of the things I wanted to highlight was how it constantly dunks on feminism. That's right. The Barbie movie starts us out by depicting a world that doesn't change at all. Everything's the same, and every house is the same. The Barbies party every night, and there's really nothing going on other than whatever satisfies them in the moment. And that's not to say that strife and anger and chaos is, is better, but there is no change. There is no stimulant for change either. There's, there's nothing happening in Barbie land. It repeats the same like Groundhog Day, that movie with Bill Murray, every day. We move on to meet the, uh, the mother and daughter duo who have inspired this very um, uh, traumatic journey for Barbie, right? So what we find out is that Barbie has to go on this mission because she's developing cellulite and thinking about death. So her, her motivations for going out are not selfless, they're selfish. So if this is supposed to be a feminist icon character, right? Her motivations shouldn't be nestled in this fear of, of her body, right? Because we were told by third wave feminists all the time that women are not their bodies, they're human beings and we should respect them as such. That's how I feel, and that's how I go about my day, but apparently in Barbie land, this is not acceptable. We see that Barbie is also afraid of death, right? This is her first thoughts upon arriving to sentience. And I brought this up in a previous video, but I want to underline it again. The Barbie at arriving at sentience is not greeted with any other thought than her demise and depression and how painful it is to be a woman. Throughout the movie, this is, continued, this is continually reminded to us, it's repeated over and over again, that there's some problem with being a woman, that it's, it's, it's some insurmountable task with being a woman. And yet we find out that America Ferreira's character has a boring job. And, and, but what does she do? She makes a lot of money. She can buy a brand new car. She drives her husband around in it. It's not his car. It's, it's hers. And she's married, too. But she's just absolutely miserable. And this guy does not hold her to any insane standard that she goes on to talk about later in the movie. You remember that, that speech at the end about how women can't be fat, they can't be thin, they can't be leaders, they can't be followers, they can't be moms, but they can't give up on what motherhood means, that kind of thing, that speech. Well, the, the problem with that is, is that it comes from a woman who has all of that, right? She's married. And her husband doesn't hold her to any standard. He's trying to learn the language he, she, he thinks she comes from. He's trying to learn Spanish to better assimilate into her culture, into her world. He's trying to be part of her existence, you know? And so who, who inspired this? The CEOs aren't telling her that she has to wear a certain thing. We don't see a scene where the CEO is saying, oh, God, you look terrible. You know, oh, that works here. We don't have any of that in this movie. Nobody is doing these critiques to the character. So what it comes off as at the end is that in order to save the Barbies, you have to make them miserable by introducing things that don't exist in their world. Fat Barbie, there was a Ken that wanted to be with her, that wanted to have a non-committal, long-distance, no strings attached, whatever, girlfriend. He wanted to be with her. He was singing um, that, that boyfriend abuse song. To her now i gotta remind you about that song that push song that song is about a man being abused by a woman okay the guy who wrote that song came out and said that it was about his girlfriend who abused him in their relationship because she didn't think he was valuable to her and then she sold all of his stuff when they broke up and left him with nothing no clothes even she sold all of his clothes it's nuts and then they turn this around and show this while the Kens are being manipulated by the Barbies to hate each other. And it's like, it's totally tone deaf to the message they're trying to send you. You have the Ken, Ken's glaring at Barbie while he's playing it. And what it comes across as is he's like, I'm trying to tell you how much you hurt me. I'm trying to tell you how, and then she hurts him again. She hurts him again. This doesn't help feminism at all. It paints it as vengeful and angry and incapable of new ideas. That's what you get throughout the movie. By the way, I don't know if you, you missed this, but your brain didn't, okay? This, the thing with Ruth at the end with the light behind her, she gets a ghost vagina, all right? And the last visual we have of Barbie is, is her in the real world. You know what happens? She's at a gynecologist's office. You know what that means? That means the only thing that makes Barbie a real woman is her vagina. 
What did we hear from third wave feminists? We're not sex objects. We are not walking fleshlights. But here's Barbie at the gynecologist, and that's what defines her as a real woman. Guess that sucks for fourth wave feminism, who wants to tell us that men can be women too, right? That's kind of weird that Barbie would have that message as its final image to leave in your head, okay? There's, there's the misstep of, of, here's the big one, right? The overarching one that really gets me is that Barbie is a femtatorship, okay? It's a dictatorship of women. They don't allow the Kens to own homes. The Kens don't have cars. The Kens don't have anywhere to be. They don't have jobs even. So they have no skills. They have nothing at all, okay? And in two hours of the movie's own universe, not in the runtime of the movie, but in the, run to, in the time of the movie's own universe, it took Kens two hours to build the Kendom. They had carved a mountain. They had established a new way of government. But above all, they had introduced democracy because they were going to vote with the Barbies to install the Constitution. All right? That's what they were going to do with the Barbies. And what did the Barbies do? They took all that away when they showed up. When they got their power back from manipulating the Kens to rig the vote... <laughs> That's a little weird. That came up, huh? To rig the vote, they go ahead and manipulate them, and they get their way and restore their power in Barbie land. And what do we find out at the end? They're not even going to reward the Kens. They're not even going to acknowledge them. They're going to give them kind of these paltry little positions. And I know that Greta wanted to be like, this is how it is in real life for, fem for women in the workplace. Well, the problem is, is that when you go and do this and you don't provide a solution to that, you just look like a dick. All right? You just look like a dick. So they completely defeated their own message throughout the whole movie. All right? It's so annoying, right, to have to listen to this, to people go on and on about how awesomely feminist and empowering it is, even though the movie just goes around and continues to remind you that it doesn't like women. I don't know where people get the idea that this is a movie made for women. This is the most pro-man movie made in the last 15 years. You should take your son to see this. This shows women at their worst. These are the women you should avoid, young men. And you should, you should embrace the message that Ken leaves us with, all right? This is the message I'll leave this video with. At the end of the movie, Ken is standing alone. There are no Kens around him. There is no new Barbie on his arm. He has a shirt that says, I am Kenaf. And what this means is, is Ken has no place in Barbie land now. If they do a sequel, he'll have to go further away. He'll have to leave Barbie land. He has no place there. He was offered no new job. At the end of the movie, he is alone. The whole universe is wide open to him. All right? He's totally undefined at the end of this. Only by his own volition, only by his own will to power, does Ken earn and develop a definition of himself. So take that message away from the movie. You define yourself and always seek to be a better you. Well, and also get a fur coat. That looked really, really good. That's one hell of a drip, right? That fur coat.